Yeah. Where's Mrs. Manning and Elizabeth? I think she went to bed, sir. I, I think she had a bad headache and she went to bed, sir. Oh, really? And how long has the good lady been in bed, do you know? Just a short time ago she went, sir, I think, sir. Then we must be quiet, must be. Walk about like cats. Can you walk about like a cat, Elizabeth? Yes, sir, I, I think so, sir. Very well, you walk about like a cat. <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, Elizabeth. Yes, sir. Did you call, sir? Why haven't you cleared away the teeth? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I, I was just about to do so, sir. I think you better clear away the tea things, hadn't you, Elizabeth? Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir, but were you going to have some supper, sir? Oh, yes, I'm going to have supper. The question is, am I going to have supper here? Oh, yes, sir. Are you having it out, sir? Yes, I'm having it out. I've just come to change my linen. Uh, do you want a, a fresh collar, sir? Shall I get you a fresh collar? Why, do you know where my collars are kept? Yes, sir. In your room, sir. Shall I get you one, sir? What a great deal you know, Elizabeth. Do you know the type of collar I want tonight? I think I know the type of collar you want, sir. <laughs> then all I can say is you know a great deal more than I do. But no, you must let me choose my own collar tonight. <laughs> That is, if I have your permission, Elizabeth. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. What did you think of Mrs. Manningham tonight, Elizabeth? Mrs. Manningham, sir? Uh, in what way, sir? Oh, just regarding her general health, Elizabeth. I, I don't know, sir. I think she... Certainly seems quite unwell, sir. So I wonder if you know to the extent. Were you beginning to guess? I don't know, sir. I'm afraid I had to drag you and Nancy into our troubles tonight. Perhaps I shouldn't have done that. It all seems very sad, sir. Am I my wit's end, Elizabeth? Do you know that? I expect you are, sir. You don't know the quarter of Elizabeth? You don't see what's forced upon your attention as it was tonight. You don't know what goes on all the time. No, not this one. Do you want another tie, sir? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Suppose you know about Mrs. Manningham's mother, Elizabeth. No, sir. What of her, sir? Not in the manner in which she died. No, sir. She died in a madhouse, Elizabeth. I had a brain at all in the end. Oh, sir, how terrible, sir. Yeah, terrible. The doctors could do nothing. You do know, don't you, that I'll have to get a doctor to Mrs. Manningham before too long. I fought against it to a last, but I can't keep it a secret much longer. No, sir. No, sir. I mean to say, you know what goes on in this house. Indeed. You could testify what goes on. Indeed, sir. Yes. Good, indeed. You may have to testify. You do realize that, don't you? Yes, sir. I would only wish to help you both, sir. Yes, I believe you there. You're a very good soul, Elizabeth. I sometimes wonder how you put up with things in this household. This wicked household. I wonder why you don't just leave. You're very loyal. Always loyal to you, sir. Always loyal to you. There now. How touching. You know you will be repaid for what you have said. And repaid in more ways than one. Thank you, sir. I only wish to serve, sir. Yes, I know that. Well, Elizabeth, I'm going out. I might even try and be a little gay. Do you understand that? Or do you believe it terribly wrong? Oh, no, sir. No. You should get what pleasure you can while you can. Mm. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> so I wonder. It's a very curious existence, isn't it? <laughs> well, good night, Elizabeth. Good night, sir. Good night. <laughs> Back for. He only came back to change his clothes. 
What will we do if he comes back? There is no light to warn us now. You've realised it, have you? Well, Mr. Manning, we've just got to take the risk. Now, this is going to be child's work, I fancy. Just a little adroitness, a little patience. What's that? Go and have a look, will you? You seem to be rather bothered this evening. It's all right. It's only Nancy. I forgot. She usually goes out at this time. She is at the front door, does she? Oh, yes. Indeed, she does. She behaves like a mistress in this house. Yeah, saucy girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. There's nothing. The lock appreciates my kindness. Or a Okay, here we go. Will you be able to close it again? Oh, yes, no damage done yet. Now, let's have a... Not much here, eh? When she got there, the cupboard was bare, so the poor detective had none. <laughs> what is that in your hand? No, just, Let me see. Just a bill, I fancy. Yes. As you say, just a bill. <laughs> just a grocer's bill. You must forgive me if I doubted you at first, Inspector. You are right. He must be the wickedest man on earth. Now, I'm afraid you're one ahead of me, Mr. Manning. This bill. This evening he went storming out of the house because he had given it to me and it had vanished. He threatened me with the madhouse if it did not come to light. I'm beginning to understand, I think, at really? last. Really? The essence of a good trick is its simplicity, yes. Is there anything else then? What else is there? Yes, look, my watch. And my brooch. <laughs> my brooch. Look at these. My God, look at these. Those are your property also then? Yes. This watch I lost last week. My brooch has been missing for three months. And he said he would give me no more gifts because I had lost them. He said that in my wickedness I had hidden them away. Oh, Inspector. You have indeed found treasure this evening. Not very much at the present, I'm afraid. At least not much to the point. Yes. <clears throat> this is locked. One moment. One moment. This letter is from my cousin. My cousin. Is his correspondence with your relations very much to the point at the moment, Mrs. May? You don't understand. You don't understand. When I was married, I was cast off by all my relations. I have not seen any of them since I was married. They did not approve of my choice. I have longed to see them more than anything else in the world. When we came to London, to this house, I wrote to them. I wrote to them twice. I never had any answer. Now I see why I had no answer. This letter is from my cousin. Oh, yes. I see. It's just another... Let me, let me read it to you. Let me read to you what he says. Dear cousin, all of us were overjoyed to hear from you again. Overjoyed, do you hear that? He goes on to say that his family are in Devonshire, that they've gone to the country. He says we must meet and recapture old times. He says that they all want to see me. He says he is sorry I have not been well, and that I must go and stay with them, that they will give me that they will give me their Devonshire cream to fatten my cheeks and their fresh air to bring the sparkle back to my eyes. And they will give me. Dear heaven, they wanted me back. They wanted me back all the time. Poor thing. Poor thing. <coughs> you shall have your Devonshire cream, my dear, and you shall have your fresh air to bring the sparkle back into your eyes. Well, I can see the sparkle in them already. Now, if you'll be brave, you will not have to wait for so long. Are you going to be brave? Thank you, Inspector, for bringing me this letter. What do you want me to do? Oh, just stand by for a moment. Uh, this drawer here, has it ever been opened, to your knowledge? No. Yes, I was afraid so. This looks like a tougher proposition, I'm afraid. <laughs> what are you going to do? Are you going to force it? If I possibly can, but I'm But you to... mustn't do that. What will I say to him when he comes back? 
I have no idea what you will say to him when he comes back, Mrs. Manning, but then I have no idea what you will do when he comes back, Mrs. Manning, if I have no evidence to remove you from his loving care for good. Oh dear. Oh, I'm afraid. What can I do? There's only one thing we can do, Mrs. Manningham. Go ahead. If we go back now, we are lost. We're going to force it and gamble on finding something. Are you with me? But don't you see that? Oh, all right. Force it. Force it, but be quick. There's no need to hurry, Pam. He's quite happy where he is. Now, I don't like violent methods of this sort. Makes me feel like a dentist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, there we are. <laughs> Alright, let's have a look. Is there anything in there? Yeah, nothing at present, I'm afraid. Nothing is, at present. Is there anything there? Uh, no, no. Oh, wait a minute. No. Is there nothing? Oh, one moment, please. No, nothing at all. We've lost our gamble, I'm afraid, Mrs. Manningham. What are we going to do now? Oh, some very rapid thinking at present. Don't have any fear, Mrs. Manningham. I've been in many a tighter corner than this. I've got to get those things back where they were. Give me the brooch and the brooch, will you? Here they are. Now, we've got to put them back where they were. Think this was on the right, was it not? Yes, that's right there. Nice piece of jewellery, this. When did they give you this? Shortly after we were married. It's only second hand. Second hand, eh? I'm afraid you got everything second hand from this gentleman. Alright, that's alright. I must lock this up if I can. Second hand. What made you think that piece of jewellery was second hand, man? There's an affectionate inscription to someone else inside. Oh, <laughs> Why didn't you tell me that? Why, I only found it myself a little while ago. You know, I think I've seen this somewhere before. Where is this inscription you're talking about? It's a sort of trick. I only found it by accident. You pull the pin at the back out. It goes to the right and then to the left. And the heart opens up. Oh, yes. Here we are. Yes. Now, there we are. What are these spaces in? There were some beads in it, but they were all loose and falling out, so I took them out. <laughs> <laughs> there were some beads. <laughs> and they were all loose and falling out. <laughs> so you took them out. <clears throat> Have you got them by any chance? <laughs> yes, I think so. I put them in a vase. And may I see them? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they should still be here. There should be nine altogether, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. I think there were. <laughs> here they are. Here are some of them, at any rate. Oh, oh thank you. Yeah. Try and find the rest of them, would you? <laughs> Did you, by any chance, ever read this inscription, Mrs. Mayer? Yes, I read it. Why? Beloved A.B. from C.B. 1851. Does nothing strike you about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, what should strike me? Really, I should have thought that as simple as ABC. <laughs> <laughs> have you got the rest? Tell me, have you ever been embraced by an elderly detective in his shirt sleeves? <laughs> <laughs> For that is your immediate fate at present. My dear Mrs. Manning, my dear, dear Mrs. Manning, don't you understand? What are you so excited about? There you are, Mrs. Manning, the Barlow Ruby's complete. 
12,000 pounds worth before your very eyes. Take a good look at them before they go to the Queen. But it couldn't be. It couldn't. They don't, were in the vase all the time. Don't you understand? Don't you see the whole thing? This is where the old lady hid a treasure at night. In a common trinket she wore the whole day. You might have seen it somewhere before. Where was that? In portraits of the old lady when I was on the case. She wore it on her breast. I remember it clearly though, 20 years ago. 20 years ago. <laughs> God in heaven, am I not a clever man? <laughs> <laughs> and I had it all the time. All the I had it all the time. And all because he could not resist a little common theft along with the big game. Well, it is I who asked for the big game now. Are you leaving? Oh yes, I must leave now, and rather rapidly at that. Uh, what are you going to do? I'm going to move heaven and earth, Mrs. Manning. If I have any luck, I should be back later tonight. It's, um... Yes, it's quite early yet. What time do you think he'll come back? I don't know. He's not usually back till 11. Yes, so I thought. Let's hope so. That will give me time. Can you give me that? You close it up? Yes. All right. Now, Mrs. Manningham, you will serve the interests of justice best by simply going to bed. You don't mind going to bed? No, no, I, I can go to bed. But what are you going to do, Inspector? Well, it's not so much what I am going to do, Mrs. Manningham. It's what the... It's what the government is going to do in the person of Sir George Raglan. Yes, Sir George Raglan. No one less power above all the powers of be. He knows I'm here tonight, but didn't know I was going to find what I've got. Yeah, yes, we're going to have to, yeah, we just have to risk that. <laughs> all right. Now, Mrs. Manningham, you go off to bed. Be there. Be ill, be anything, but stay there. I'll let myself out. Don't leave me. Please, don't leave me. I have a feeling. Don't Leave me. Have the goodness to, to stop making a tool of yourself, Mrs. Manning. But Inspector, I have a feeling that something terrible will happen if you leave me. I have it the courage. Here's the courage. <laughs> Make some more of it, but don't get tipsy. Don't leave it about. Bye. Inspector. Yes. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mrs. Manning? Yes. All right. Goodbye. Seems the entire household has gone to bed without leaving me my milk, without leaving me my biscuits. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. They're only just outside. I'll bring him in here. Mrs. Nineham usually gets employed, doesn't she, sir? Uh, cooks in bed, you see, and I've only just come in. Quite now. Then perhaps you will deputise for Mrs. Manningham and bring them into the room. Certainly, sir. Before you do that, can we tell Mrs. Manningham I wish to see her down here? Yes, sir. Certainly, sir. Well, Nancy, 
did you go upstairs? Uh, yes, sir. She says she has a headache, sir, and is trying to sleep. But she still has a headache, has she? Yes, sir. Is there anything else you want, sir? Have you ever known a time when Mrs. Manningham hasn't had a headache, Nancy? Uh, no, sir. I'll be out, sir. Do you normally perform your domestic tasks in your outdoor costume, Nancy? I told you, sir. I've only just come in. I've heard the bell by chance. Yes, that's just the point. How do you mean, sir? Will you be so good as to come close to Nancy where I can see you? Have you any idea the time of the day? <laughs> or rather, night it is, Nancy? Yes, sir. I thought I saw you, sir. Oh, you thought you saw me? Well, I certainly saw you. Did you, sir? Have you ever reflected, Nancy? We've given a great deal of latitude in this house. I don't know, sir. I don't know what latitude means. Latitude, Nancy, means considerable liberty. Liberty to the extent of two nights off a week. Yes, sir. Well, that's all very well. It's not so well you're returning as late as the master of the house. We ought to keep up some pretense, you know. Yes, sir. We must. Nancy! Yes, sir? Where the devil have you been tonight, anyway? <laughs> Only with some friends, sir. You know, gentlemen friend, have been known to take decided liberties with young ladies like yourself. Are you alive to such a possibility? <laughs> no, sir. Not with me. I can look after myself. Are you always so anxious to look after yourself? Uh, no, sir. Not always. Perhaps. You know, Nancy, as pretty as your bonnet is, it's not nearly as pretty as your hair beneath it. Will you be so good as to take it off and let me see? Very good, sir. It comes off easy enough. There. Is there anything more you want, sir? Yes, possibly. Come here with you, Nancy. Is there anything else you want, sir? Yes. Possibly. What do you want, eh? What do you want? Can you do that? Can you do that? We can be talking about Nancy. You know what I mean, all right? You know, you're a very remarkable young girl in many respects. I do believe you're jealous of your mystery. She? She is a poor thing. There is no need to be jealous of her. You want to kiss me again, don't you? Don't you want to kiss me again? <laughs> <laughs> That's an illicit headache, ain't it? A sick headache and a pale face all the day. Yes, Nancy, I do believe it is. I think, however, don't you, that you and I should meet one evening in different surroundings. Yes? Well, I'll meet you any way you like. Because you're mine now, ain't you? Because you want me. You want me, don't you? <laughs> and what of you, Nancy? Do you want me? Ever since I first had eyes on you, I wanted you more than all of them. Oh, there were plenty of others. Oh yes, there are plenty of others. As I rather imagine, and only nineteen. Wait for me. Where do you want us to meet? Really, Nancy, you've taken me a little by surprise. I'll let you know tomorrow. How will you let me know tomorrow? When she's about? Oh, I'll find a way. Not that I care for her. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to kiss you under her very nose. That's what I'd like to do. All right, Nancy. Now you better go. Go? I don't want to go. <laughs> there. Run along. I've got some work to do. Work? What are you going to work at? What are you going to do? Just going to write some letters. Go along, Nancy. There's a good girl. <sighs> All right. You shall be master for a little longer. <laughs> good night, you other two. Good night. When will you let me know tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> find the time, Nancy. We're going to find the time. Good night. Good Yes. <laughs>
whether she is to come down here this instant, whether she is suffering from a sick headache or any other form of ailment. Just like that, sir? Just like that. With the greatest of pleasure, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Take a note to this wretched imbecile and slip it under the door. Yes, what are you going to write? Never mind what I'm going to write. I'll tell you what you can do, though. Yes, what? Go down to the basement to bring the little dog here with you. The dog? <laughs> yes, the dog. What's the game? What's the idea of the dog? Never mind, just go and get it, will you? Alright. One second thought, you need not get the dog. We'll just suppose that we have the dog. Here. What have you written this? <laughs> Nothing very much, just a little smoke for getting rats out of holes. You're a rum beggar, ain't you? Can I look? Go along now. <laughs> Sit down in this chair, please, Bella. Where is the dog? Where have you got the dog? Dog? What dog? Have you hurt it? Where is it? Let me have it. Have you hurt it again? Again? What strange talk from you, Bella, after what you did to the dog a few weeks ago. Come and sit down there. I do not want to talk to you. I'm not well. Thought you had the dog and were going to hurt it. That is why I came down. The dog, my dear fella, was merely a ruse to compel you to pay me a visit quietly. Now come and sit down where I told you. No, I want to go. Come and sit down where I told you! Yes, yes, what do you want? Great deal, Bella. Now sit down and make yourself comfortable. We have plenty of time. No, I want to go. You cannot keep me here. I want sit to go. Sit down and make yourself comfortable. We have plenty of time. Say what you have to say. You're not sitting in the chair I indicated, Bella. What have you to say? I have to say that you're not sitting in the chair I indicated. Are you so afraid of me that you desire to be so close to the door? No. I'm not afraid of you. Indeed, then you have a great deal of courage, my dear. However, will you now sit where I told you? Yes. 
You know what you remind me of, Bella, as you walk across the room? No. What do I remind you of? A somnambulist, Bella. Have you ever seen such a person? No, I have not seen one. Haven't you? Not that funny, dazed, glazed look of the wandering mind, the body that actually had a soul to guide them. I've often thought you've had that look. It has never been so strong as tonight. My mind is not wandering. No. When I returned tonight, I was told you had gone to bed. <clears throat> yes, I had gone to bed. Then why are you still fully dressed? Did you hear what I said? Yes, I heard what you said. Then why, since you had gone to bed, you are still fully dressed? I don't know. You don't know. Do you know anything about anything you do? I don't know. I forgot to undress. You forgot to undress. A curious oversight, if I do say so, Bella. You know, you've given me the impression you've had a rather exciting time since I last saw you. Almost as if you've been up to something. How? You? Been up to something? I don't know what you mean. Do you find that bill I told you to find? No. No. Do you remember what I said would happen to you if you did not find that bill when I returned tonight? No. No, no. Am I married to a dumb woman, Bella? In addition to everything else, the array of your physical and mental deficiencies is getting beyond endurance. I pray you answer me. What do you want me to say? I asked you if you remembered something. Go on, my dear. What was it I asked you if you remembered? I don't understand your words. You talk round and round. My head is going round and round. It is not necessary for you to tell me that, Bella. I am just wondering if it might interrupt its gyratory motion for a fraction of a second and concentrate on the present conversation. Now, what was it? I, a moment ago, asked you if you remembered. You asked me if I remembered what you said would happen to me if I did not find that bill. Admirable, my dear Bella. Admirable. We'll make a great addition of you yet. A Socrates, a John Stuart Mill, <clears throat> will go down in history as a shining mind of today, that is if your present history doesn't altogether submerge you and take you away from your fellow creatures, and there's a great danger of that, you know, in more ways than one. Now what was it I said would happen to you if you did not find that bill? You said you would lock me up. Yes. And you believe me to be a man of my word, Bella? You see in life, Considerable and varied experiences, I've hammered out a few principles of action. I actually fancy I know how to deal with my fellow man. I learned it quite quickly. At school, in fact, there, there are two ways of getting what you wanted. One, along the intellectual plane. The other, the physical. If one fails, one use the other. I took that lesson into life. Hitherto with you, I have worked what forbearance and patience I have leave you to judge along the intellectual plane. The time has now come to work along the other as well. You'll know me to be a man of some power. <laughs> Why do you look at me, Bella? I said I'm a man of some power and determination and fully capable in one direction as the other. I will leave your imagination to work out what I mean. However, we really are digressing. You did not find that bill. No. Did you look for it? Yes. Where did you look for it? Around the room. Around the room. Where around the room? In my desk, for instance? No, not in your desk. Why not in my desk? Your desk is locked. Do you believe you can lie to me, Bella? I'm not lying. Come here. What do you want? Now your dark, confused, rambling mind has led you on to play some pretty tricks tonight, hasn't it? My mind is tired. I want to go to bed. Your mind is indeed tired. 
Your mind is so tired, you can no longer work at all. You dream, dream all day long, dream maliciously and incessantly. Do you know that by now you sleep walking in beside? Where is your mind wanted tonight that you split open my gift? What strange, diseased dream have you had tonight, eh? Dream? Are you saying that I've dreamed? Dreamed all that has happened? All that has happened? When? Tonight? Of course you've dreamed all that has happened. But what did not happen? Dream? Tonight you've seen my... Dream. Oh God! Have I dreamed? Have I dreamed again? Have I not just said you've dreamed? But I haven't dreamed! I haven't! In God's name, don't say be that! Quiet, I haven't! Be quiet, be quiet and sit down. Now what was this dream of yours, Bella? You interest me. I dreamt of a man. I dreamt of a man. You dreamt of a man, Bella. What man did you dream, pray? The man that came to see me. Let me rest. Let me rest. Focus, you're a clever girl. What? Look, tell me more about this man. I dreamt that a man came in here. I know you dreamed it, you giver and wretch. I need to know more about this man of whom you speak. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Spit it out, woman! I dreamed it. I Was I any part of this curious dream of yours, Mrs. Manningham? Perhaps my presence here will help you to recall it. May I ask who the devil you are? How you got here? Well, who I am seems to be in doubt at the moment, doesn't it? Apparently I'm a mere figment of your wife's imagination. As to how I got in, I came in. <laughs> I came back. But better still. I effected an entrance a few minutes before you, and I've been hidden away ever since. You'd be kind enough to tell me what you're doing here, sir. Waiting for a friend. Don't you think you ought to go to bed, Mrs. Manning, and we're looking very tired. Don't you think you'd better explain your business, sir? Well, as a mere figment, as a mere ghost in your Mrs. Manningham's mind, I don't have any business, do I? <laughs> Can you see me, Mr. Manning? <laughs> <laughs> of course your wife can, but it must be difficult for you. <clears throat> Perhaps if she goes to bed, I will simply vanish. <laughs> <laughs> and you won't have to deal with me anymore. Bella, go to your room. I will find out the meaning of this and deal with you in due course. I... Go to your room. I will call you down later. I am not finished with you yet, madam. You know, I think you're wrong there, Manningham. I think that's just what you have done. Done what? Finished with your wife, my friend. Now, sir, are you going to have the goodness to tell me your name and your business, <laughs> if any? Well, as a mere spirit, I have no name. <laughs> Perhaps the spirit of something you have evaded all your life. But then, only a spirit. Mind if I sit down? We may have to wait some time. Will you tell me what you are doing here, sir? Am I going to have to fetch a policeman and have you turned out? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> fetch a policeman, Mr. Manningham. I could have thought of nothing better myself. <laughs> Fetch a policeman and have me turned out. <laughs> Why do you wait? Alternatively, I could turn you out myself. Yes, but why not fetch a policeman? <laughs> you seem to have something up your sleeve, sir. Will you go on with what you were saying? Yes. Sir, where was I? Ah, oh, yes. Excuse me, Mr. Manning, but do you get the same impression as myself? What impression? An impression that the light seems to be going down in this room. I have noticed it. Yes, sure. There. Eerie, isn't it? Now we're in, we're almost in the dark. Why do 
you suppose that has happened? You don't think someone else has put on a lamp? You don't suppose that a stranger has entered the house? Perhaps a spirit, a fellow spirit of mine, a spirit of justice which has caught up with you at last, Mr. Manning. Are you off your head, sir? <laughs> no, sir, just an old man seeing ghosts. Must be the atmosphere of the house. I can see them everywhere. It's the oddest thing. You know one spirit I can see, Mr. Manning? What ghost can you see, pray? The spirit of an old woman, an old woman 20 years ago, the ghost of an old lady about to go up to bed, about to go up to bed at the end of the day. What do you say? It's the oddest thing, I can see it so clearly, sir. She sits just there. And now it seems I see the ghost of another person. Why? I see the ghost of a young man. <coughs> a tall, handsome, well-groomed young man. But this young man has murder in his eyes. Why, sir, he could be you. He could be you, Mr. Manningham. The old lady sees him. Don't you see it all? She screams, screams for help, screams before a throat is cut, cut open with a knife. She lies dead on the floor, dead on the floor of this house, in this room, there. Now I don't see that ghost anymore. What's the game, eh? What's the game? But I still see the ghost of the man. I see the ghost searching all through the night, ransacking the house, hour after hour, turning everything out, ripping everything up. And then 20 years pass. And where is he? Why, is he not still in the same house? Does he not stand before the ghost of the woman he killed? in the room in which he killed her, a methodical man, patient man. But perhaps he has waited too long, for justice has waited too. Justice found, my friend, in one hour, what you searched for for 20 years could not find. See what she found? First a bill, which your wife had lost. Then a letter, which never reached your wife. Then a brooch, which you gave your wife but which she lost. How wicked of her. But then, she didn't know its value. How was she to know that it held the Barlow rubies? There you are, sir. 12,000 pounds worth before your very eyes. You killed one woman for those. Tried to drive another out of her mind. All the time, they lay in your own desk. And all they've brought you is the rope around your neck. The game is over, Sydney Power. And I advise you to take the matter philosophical. You have some very remarkable information. Do you believe you're going to leave this room with said information in your possession? <laughs> <laughs> you believe you're going to leave this room without suitable escort? What do you mean by that? Only that I have a man already in the house. 
Then you realize you can signal his entrance from above your way in when the light went down. Yeah, what the devil is this? Ah, oh, sir, come and make yourself comfortable. Sidney Charles Power, I have a warrant for your arrest for the murder of Alice Barlow. I should warn you, anything you may say now may be taken down and used as evidence at a later date. Will you accompany us to the station in a peaceful manner? I should advise you that you will oblige us greatly and serve your own interests best if you come along quietly. Very well. Take him away. Inspector Roth. <laughs> yes, my dear. Inspector, now, don't you think that... I want to speak to my husband. Now, surely you don't... I think... want to speak to my husband. Very well. What do you want to say? I want to speak with him alone. Alone? Yes, alone. I don't quite understand. I beg of you to allow it. I won't keep him long. Very well. You may speak to him alone. Very well. Ah. This is very much not in order, but we will wait outside. You must not take long. I do not want you to listen. I will not listen. Oh, Jack! Jack, what have they done to you? What have they done? Ah, take it easy, Bella. Go get something to cut this. Go get something I can make a break for it. I can jump out through the dressing room window. Yes, I, I can get you something. What can I get? There's a razor in the dressing room. In there. Quickly, be quick. Yes, I'll get it. I'll get it for you. Good girl. You're a clever girl, Bella. How strange. The door is locked. <laughs> locked? What do you mean locked? There's a key on the mantel. Use that and get in.
Very well. Take him along. I will join you shortly. <laughs> Come along, my dear. Sit down. Well, my child, there's all your life ahead of you. There's Devonshire cream to fatten your cheeks, <laughs> fresh air to put sparkle back in your eyes. But you've had a bad time. I came in out of nowhere and I gave you the most horrible evening of your life. Imagine. Most horrible evening of anybody's life, I should say. The most horrible? Oh no. The most wonderful. Far and away, the most wonderful. Oh. <laughs> 